Welcome to Rick Drayson Live. I'm your host, Rick Drayson. And as you know, on many of my shows, I have a variety of people from all different professions in the entertainment business to fitness to bodybuilding to nutrition. And I just kind of open up the, the span as big as I can and bring interesting people. And today is no different. I have a person who was an actress at five. She was a dancer. She was a school teacher. She's a producer, director, writer, you name it. She's done it all. And she's my friend, Pepper J. <laughs> Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks for being here, Pepper. You know, usually, I'm working for you. That's true. And I host your shows. And yes. today you're my guest, and I'm thrilled to death to have you here. You, you began acting at the age five? Yes. You yes. knew at five what you wanted to do? No, not at all. Oh, OK. Just my family <laughs> was into it, and I was brought along as part of what we were doing. And, what, and that was The Real McCoys? Real McCoys was the first TV show I was on. Really? Yeah. I remember that very well. Yeah, it's very interesting, because when I walked into the studio, they shot at CBS Studio at Fairfax and Third? And third, yeah, yeah. And it was an inside shot. And but it was an outside set. And so I watched the real McCoys on TV. I was very surprised at five years old that the cabin was inside with yeah. all the lights all over the place. It was um I was not I guess I was disappointed. I, I know exactly what you're saying. That's like an indoor I saw a log cabin once inside a set and it was built for the outdoors and the woods and the forest, but it was inside. But it worked. Yes, yeah, it worked. It definitely yeah, worked, sure. but as a kid, I'm, I'm sure you're thinking, oh, all this. Oh. That's right. After that, what did you do? I mean, you got mother roles at that age? Right. I was on several TV shows that people probably don't even remember. Sky King. I remember Sky King. Uh, my Friend Flicka. I remember that. I don't even remember the other ones. And I did a lot of live events. My grandmother was very big on charities, mm -hmm. and she would have me sing, dance, play the accordion to, for the City of Hope, and, and all these live events. You did tap places. dance, right? I did tap dance. See? Yay. Can you still? I still tap. Yeah, not yeah. as often as I like, but I still have my shoes and I still enjoy it. You know, it's kind of a lost art because I think that tap dance is, is just fantastic. It's mm. something that, that I know I'd look like a fool doing it, but I always want to know because I, I think it gives you grace in your step. I think you would be great, particularly how athletic you are. I think you'd be a great tap dancer. That'd be a, 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 quite a, a sight. Um, <laughs> what other kind of dance did you do? I took ballet when I was a kid. And uh, as time went on, a lot of ballroom dancing I enjoyed, jazz dancing. Yeah. Did you use any of that in your acting? Hmm. I did a music video for ABBA once. Oh, really? And I played the part of a cafeteria cook. And there was dancing involved in that music video. That's the only acting that I can think of that I used my dancing in. You went on to become a school teacher. I didn't know you knew that. See? Yes, that's true. And what did you teach? Well, I taught a lot of things. I taught Spanish, history, mm -hmm. geography. I taught a lot of performance skills. I was uh, the dr drill team sponsor at Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. you know, where the kids go on the field and halftime with sure. a band and different things. Sure. I taught tap dancing, taught performance skills, singing, drama. That's a lot of stuff. Did you, you went to school <laughs> to become a teacher? Is that what you I want? went to college. I went to college to become a doctor. And then <laughs> I decided that I couldn't separate myself from people's pain so well. Yeah. So I became a teacher. Did you like it? I love teaching. I adored teaching. You still do. Well, I do. I teach now on an individual level or right. a small group level. Or... How long did you teach school? Well, let's see. I started teaching school in 83. I was minus 10 years old then, of course. Yeah, of course. Of course. And uh, I taught public school for 14 years. All right. During that time, yes. in your mind, you had obviously other goals. No, at that time I just adored teaching and I didn't really think of doing anything else. But you got into production after that, right? Well, I was doing production all the way through. Right. Yes. I, I never left production. I always enjoyed plays, being in theater, putting on theater, uh, being in films, uh, student films. You know, it doesn't matter if it's HBO. I, I just enjoy it. Right. Did you produce anything at that time as far as plays? I helped people produce, but okay. I didn't do my own production for plays, you know. That, Did that you have an, an aspiration at that time to produce those kind of things? I still do. I want to create a small theater. I know exactly where I want to put it, but I can't tell you. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, you went in to do, uh, well, this kind of might have come later, but Actor Z and Actors Reporter? You know, I had a student once, a song performance student. Right that asked me a question about the Screen Actors Guild. 
Okay. And I said, go on the site, SAG.org. At that time, it was before SAG and after it had sure. merged. And they couldn't find it. And so I looked it up, and I found the answer, but it was really deep inside. So my partner, John Ferrari, says, why don't you create a website uh, for actors and you have and singers so they can ha answer certain questions where you find them? Mm -hmm. And that's how that started. And then SAG got, you know, I went to SAG and I became a SAG signatory, okay. where you have an agreement with them. And it all worked out well until the SAG lawyers called me and said, you, you can't do this. Why? I said, well, well, because it was called Ferrari SAG Podcast. It was John Ferrari's idea. Right. It was sort of a bag SAG, and it was a podcast. Right. So all of the lawyers on one side of the table and John and I on the other, and they came up with the idea that if the Ferrari SAG Podcast was a small part of something larger, well, at that time, we were already doing news for Actors' Equity mm -hmm. and AFTRA and some other shows. So we thought, we went and I uh, trademarked Actors' Reporter. And the Actors Reporter was the first channel that we had on the internet. Okay. There was an Actors Reporter magazine too, or no? Right. It used to be in print. Now right. it's only online, okay. actorsreporter.com. The, the network is the Actors Podcast Network. Okay. When you host for me, you host on the Actors Eat Chat Show, right. a live chat show right. that runs Monday through Friday. That's one of 15 shows on the Actors Entertainment channel. Okay. And then there's Actors Radio, Actors Entertainment, and Actors Reporter. Yeah. You've really blossomed this thing out to be big. You know, I have great crews, a lot of nice, talented young people that work with me, mm -hmm. and you know, it keeps me young doing all these things. It certainly does. I mean, I've done your shows and I've been in your studio, and it's just the teamwork is unbelievable. Yes. Everybody's right on cue, and they get this and that, and you're over there, and you're just like throwing fingers around and direct this and this, and it all comes together so nice in the end. Thank you. It just comes together great, and, and you work quick. Bing, 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 bing. Yes. I know when I come in for you and you tell me to do something, I'll say it now, and then. So we're going like there's no hesitation. You, no, you better go now. <laughs> you weren't quite sure when you first walked in, but you caught on very quickly. Everyone is so excited every time Rick Drayson comes into the <laughs> studio. No, I'm just happy that I can breathe and get there. <laughs> yeah, um, me too. How far is your goal, your, your the, the global reach of your show? How far does it go? We're an international show. Okay. Uh, some of these shows have better uh, audience than others. The Actors Eat Chat show that you have is just under six million. <laughs> Right. Uh, some of the shows can get four or six hundred viewers in a day, so it just really depends. A lot of it depends on who the talent is. Mm -hmm, of course. And uh, and like for example, some of the shows that aren't even video shows, like Thesbian Thoughts, which is a theater review, mm -hmm. we had some French director tweet about it, and then all of a sudden we had thousands and thousands of viewers on that. Isn't that true? Article in one day, so. It doesn't really have a lot to do with me. It has a lot to do with everything. Right. Yeah. You, did you start a radio show? Actors Radio. Okay, well, this is a while back now. It's not too far back. It's right. the newest uh, channel we have. Right. We have some original content on it, and we're in pre-production on like an old-time radio show, except right. for now. Yes. I'd really like you to be involved. I wanted to. And we have uh, <laughs> Filmmaker's Corner with Roxy She that it, they interview cinematographers and different things, but in a radio format. Right. And Joe Sabatino, who is the producer of Necessary Revenous, mm -hmm. he has a show on there called Beyond Our Understanding. And then we have about 50 radio stations, including Cirrus and, and iHeartRadio and stuff that sort of pay a f some little yeah, bit. Sure. Sort of, we link out to them. So these, I think it's a lovely station. These are stories like, like uh, epilogues on, on radio where you come in and you play a character? It will be. Yeah, the one we're working on in pre-production will be. That's what I'm thinking of. Yes. Yeah. But the other ones are really just either interview shows and, or one is, uh, beyond our understanding, his first episode was Free Harvey free Lee Harvey mm -hmm. and it was all these people that study the JFK assassination mm -hmm. because it's beyond our understanding things right. that we don't know a lot of things we don't know Boy, it's I don't even understand the questions let alone the answers so uh, your show reaches out to a lot of actors I know when I'm on you go to actors reporter they have actors discounts yes uh, and so your audience is actors and now you have a book on acting here well actually we thought our actor act bleh, mm -hmm. we thought our audience would be actors turns out only 15 percent really of the audience of Actors Eat Chat are I'm actors. I was too. There are people that like People Magazine. They like to open it up and just see people. And I am working on a book. It will be published, I think, in about five weeks called Dynamic Song Performance Skills. But the one I brought today is John Ferrari's book. And right. this is not even the book. It's called Acting With Your Eyes. And this right. is a mock-up because I ordered it. It went on Amazon last week and went to number two. Excellent. Number two bestseller on Amazon, right. Acting With Your Eyes by John Michael Ferrari. Number two in the acting and auditioning 
category, I should right. mention. And you know, you've been on the set. Yes. You know when directors say, you're doing too much, do less. Less is more. Right, but the people don't know what to do. Right. That's what this book is about. Excellent. This book tells people what to do with your eyes and gives them a specific thing. And good for the beginner, but the veteran actors, 200, 300 credits that he's taught this to are amazed. It's simple, it's easy, it's 42 pages of dynamite stuff for singers, comics, actors, anyone that has to be in front of a camera. Well, my feelings are that eyes tell all. You can tell when a person's, when their eyes are in the moment and when they're lost. Right, and vague. You, yeah, vague and there's just nothing going on. Mm. I've seen people that you look at them in the eyes and you think this person just does, just is cold as steel. But acting, of course, is in the eyes because if you're cropped here and there, this is all you have to work with. Right, and you need to know when you're a close-up <clears> or a medium shot. And I tell actors all the time, ask. Particularly mm -hmm. in an audition, mm -hmm. because if you're, they tell you it's a medium shot, then you want to use your space a little bit. A little bit. If they tell you it's a long shot, then you've got basically almost the, you know, exactly. two or three feet on each side of you. Yeah. But if it's a close up, you want to stay in that little box. Um, just a little bit more about John, because I know John pretty well, not as well as you do, <laughs> and I happen to think that he is a wonderful guy and a very talented person yes, yes. and a musician and a photographer, and he does about everything. Well, I don't know that he does everything, but he has, does everything in a. In, in, in photography, cinematography, he's right. directed films, and right. TV. He does a lot of directing. Photography and directing is almost the same thing. Right. Because he directs his photo sessions. He actually helps models and people. And yes, he used to make his living as an entertainer. Yeah, I know. Singer. Ferrari and Friends is still an ongoing oldies band that yeah. travels and We've performs talked guitars everywhere. many times. <laughs> well, not only that, he's putting together a celebrity band for uh, going out, and he wants you included. And he wants Shane included, too. Really? We yes, can bring our guitars, absolutely. no strings attached, there right? There you go. No <laughs> strings attached would be a problem. This is interesting. I like this. I think this is a book that everybody should read. because. Thank it, you. Go to Amazon, Acting With Your Eyes. And it's also on iTunes. You okay. can download it. Yeah. Oh, iTunes. I know you can do that. Yes. And it hasn't gone on to Kindle yet, but it's on its way, I hope, shortly. Okay, now, let's get to this point. Where do you see yourself or your show going from this point on? I know it's always growing, mm -hmm. and you're always moving forward. We've talked about this a lot. You can't stand still in life. You've got to keep expanding. Right. And it's a never-ending process of learning. Right. Every day comes something new. What do you see coming up? You know, I'm not very good at that, Rick. I'm so appreciative of everything that's going on. It's bigger and better than anything I have ever imagined. Yeah. I need a new sponsor for my foodie show, Savoring the Sweetness. Contact me, Pepper J. But... Uh, just going with the flow. Mm -hmm. Every time someone comes in, they have an idea. Oh, yeah, I'd really like to do this, or can I? And I just, they just come to me with the greatest ideas, and I try to be flexible and grow with it. Yes. You know, I just, um, I'm just amazed on how, and I have the best in hosts. You, I have Brenda Epperson from The Young and oh, the she's Restless. Awesome. Yeah, she's I, I, I have Karis Morgan Moyer from, you know, Pride and Prejudice. I have people that are just absolutely amazing hosts on the show, and um, a lot more of what we're doing, maybe. You don't know this, but, but I talk about you a lot, because I really, really, really look up to you. Yay. You're kind of like my mentor, in a way, and Thank I don't think you, you knew so this. Much. But I take in, when I do your show, everything that right. you do and how you do it, and I, I digest it. And I try to apply it to things I know as well, because you lead the way. Well, and you've done so well with your shows, and so many of them, and I'm they're so done. interesting. I know you're not. I'm not done. But I like, you know, Brett, Walco is a comic that it was a, a host. Mm -hmm. He also took it and created a network. You know, you are, take it, take a, that's the best thing of people imitating and taking and growing. As a, as a teacher, yeah. that's the best stuff. I've learned a lot from you. Thank and you. And you know what, and when you do take it to that level, when you take it out there, I mean, I'm going to places now where people stop me and say, I'm a fan of your shows. And I could be in Vegas, I could be in Orange County, I could be anywhere, and someone will come, oh, yeah, I watch your show. Can I get a picture with you? And they're shaking. I said, wait a minute, I'm just a Rick Drayson eating dinner with my girlfriend. Yes. I know who you are. Yes. <laughs> so you know when you reach that level that you've done something and you've touched the public. Right, but you've touched the public way before that, both as a bodybuilder yeah. and, and, and doing stunts and teaching stunts and actor. I mean, but you never do it for that reason. You just yeah. do it because you love it. That's true, but it's nice when people walk up and say, "Can I have a signature, please?" Exactly. You know. um, where can we find you online? If we, people want to look you up and come watch your show, or they want to contact you, oh. it's really important. We right. need to know where. Well, of course, googling in quotes Pepper J. Yeah. J A Y is my last name. Pepper is my first name. Actors Reporter. Right. If you get to the uh, actorsreporter.com, the contact information doesn't go to re me directly, but it'll go to someone that'll get it to me. Right. All of the sites, actorsradio.com, actorsentertainment.com, pepperj.com, if you want to learn more about my acting and my 
contact information for that. I'd love you to, to it's join It's all there. Me. Yes, it is. And the production company is uh, Pepper J, just the initial J.com. Oh, it is, okay. Yeah, and that focuses on a lot of things, but mostly focuses on the live entertainment that we, we produce. I told you this once before that, that uh, George J. Yes, my cousin. Your cousin was yes. my first agent. Yes. George J. was an agent that was incredible. He dealt mostly with novelty acts. Yes. Uh, jugglers, bodybuilders. And he worked with Coralie. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And he had this nice voice. Yes, he did. He was he, he was a voiceover actor I know all the he time, was. radio announcer. All right. Do you have any tips for any of these people out here watching as far as acting, producing, directing, or anything they might want to do in the business? Well, thank you. You know, it used to be that you had to wait. You had to wait for someone to book you in something, someone to hire you in something. And now I say do your own thing. I was talking before the show about a 13-year-old that did his thing on skateboarders and his skateboarder friends and some of the tricks. It was an amazing thing. You know, just find out who's doing what you want to do and mimic them. YouTube, Vimeo, put out, you know, yourname.com, just make it happen. And there's no age limit, not nine or not 90, to be creative and, and to put it out there. I agree, totally. Well, thank you so much for being here. Oh, Rick, It's been thank a pleasure, you so honey. Much. I love and and you. don't forget, Acting With Your Eyes, it's on Amazon.com, yes, right? Yes, thank you so much. And on iTunes, John Ferrari, he's an excellent guy, and this is something that you want to read, and we want to give him a good plug. Yes, we do. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Bye, you guys. I'll see you next time. Rick Drayson live right here with the one, the only, often ten imitated, never duplicated, 220 pounds of coiled steel and sex appeal, Rick Drayson. Ooh.